There's a lot of conversation today about the church being missional yep. or remissionalized. Mm -hmm. um, what is the mission of the church and how does the church pursue that mission? The mission of the church, the, the definition that I like of mission is joining in with what God is doing. Mm. Um, and the truth, the truth behind that are that God uh, is there, is at work, and mm. it's a case of us joining mm. in. Um, what is God's mission? Uh, well, I think that's best summarised as the, the, the reconciliation of all things. So um, that we, uh, Colossians 1, 15 to, uh, 15 to 20 is, is, is the classic passage of that. Uh, so the recognition that it is not just a case of evangelism and the reconciliation of the mm. vertical relationship, but actually that he's reconciling all things, the whole of creation to himself. Uh, and so that's relationships uh, with others, relationship with creation as well, and bringing all those things to, th together through Christ. Um, do you use the term integral mission? Uh, we do, yeah. 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 Uh, we mainly use it, uh, I, I mean, I, I would argue that our work is an integral expression of mission um, mm. in, our, in our context. Um, we actually do use the term itself primarily for our work that we do with a local church in Nepal. Yeah. So the local church in Nepal, uh, is a, as I mentioned, is a very recent, um, recent church. It was the, the, Nepal was a closed country up until 1950, mm. uh, and at that point the borders opened and enabled uh, some uh, Christians as well as the mission organisations to come in. Um, but the church itself um, has always been very focused on evangelism and church planting, mm. and they're passionate evangelists, uh, the Nepalese. Um, and they kind of left the, the social side, the demonstration side of the gospel to the mission organisations while the local church got on with the evangelism and the church planting. And that, uh, that uh, dichotomy uh, existed for a number of decades. But in the last 10 years that has begun to change and that's been the focus of our work with the local churches, helping them to understand the breadth and the depth of God's, uh, God's mission. Um, and see that actually God calls us to be salt and light where we are in our communities and to have a particular concern uh, for the poor in our communities as the victims of injustice. Um, so one, the first step in that is uh, helping the church leaders and the church membership to understand the, the, the biblical mandate for getting involved in your community and then giving them the practical tools to do that. Um, but relying on their own resources. So it's not a case of throwing money uh, at them and getting them to sort of be development organisations, but actually to be salt and light in their, in their situations. There's been a huge shift in the last decade as we've seen the Nepali church really get out of their, their doors and rather than being a, a sort of inward-facing, persecuted uh, church, to actually be outward-facing and, and going out and serving, uh, serving the communities and those around them. And that's been uh, fantastic to see. What role do you see Micah playing in God's mission? Um, I think Micah's played a very significant uh, role in, in, in God's mission, particularly bringing back the demonstration and the, the proclamation together, as, mm. the, as the Micah definition of integral mission says that our evangelism should have social consequences and our uh, social action should have evangelistic consequences. Um, and I think Micah, I mean, integral, the whole integral mission movement, of course, was a a reaction against this rejection mm. of the demonstration of the gospel that heard, uh, mm. occurred in the sort of middle part of, of, of the last century. Uh, and Micah has played a real role in bringing that balance back together and particularly uh, bringing the demonstration, uh, the, the mercy and justice side of things back uh, onto the agenda of the evangelical church. Um, and it's fantastic to hear what you know different Micah mm. groups are doing and different organisations are doing and... Uh, and, and how that's m moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think th th that shift that has occurred in Nepal mm -hmm. has actually been a global shift as well, um, and Mike has played a, a key role in that. Mm -hmm. Let's just spend time with Nepalese Christians. Mm -hmm. What do you think some of the things that they can teach the Western Church today? I think uh, they can teach, we can learn a lot from uh, Nepali Christians. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we can learn from them is the the courage they have in sharing their faith. Mm. Um, so although you will still get discrimination against Christians in Nepal um, and uh, to a certain extent some persecution as well, the Christians in Nepal have always been very courageous at, at sharing their faith. Um, 
And they've done that in quite a pluralistic context. Mm. And uh, increasingly in the West, we have a pluralistic context. Um, mm. And we kind of struggle to understand how to communicate our faith in, in, that, in, that, uh, in that context. And I think the Nepali church to, can, can, um, can help us to understand how to do that and give us the, the courage to, to do that. Mm.